Hello, welcome to a Brawl modding tutorial. I apologize for the length in between this video and the last, but I've been really busy, so let's just get right to it. This is CSS Organizer 2.0, and what that does is allow you to create your own layout for the character selection screen. This is a lot of fun to have because it really feels like um, a personal touch and you can get really professional results that look really good make your friends really envious let's get started by going to the download for this and you can download it uh, at this URL which of course will be in the description thanks Phantom Wings for this great program and all you need to do is make sure that you have the custom CSS code and the CSS fix and obviously just if you throw in all the custom CSS codes you're gonna be fine after downloading this, you will have to extract the file and you'll get this folder. Open it up and to run, well, to, the file that CSS Organizer opens is the sc underscore cell character underscore en dot pack. You can download this just by searching it off Google or from any number of places if you know uh, you could rip it from the disk or whatever. Go into this file and uh, double click on CSS Organizer 2.0 which of course will open up the application. This is the CSS Organizer um, prompt. It has the stock image of just it's just an image of what your brawl CSS should look like in the background. Of course if you have a custom background or anything like that it won't look like this. It's just for reference. Go to File Open and navigate to where you have that SC underscore scale character dot pack. Mine's right here. And what will happen is it will open up that file and it will show you basically what you see in Brawl if you don't have a custom CSS. Fix that. Okay. So, because this program is so robust and it kind of, well not robust, but it's so creative. I mean, you make your own CSS. It's every person will make their own. I'm not going to show you how to make one per se, I'm just going to give you the tools so that you know how to make one and then you can make it yourself. You're not going to be copying me, you're just going to be learning. So I'll explain what each of these things does over here. First off, layout. Um, layout is how many buttons you actually have. Right now we have 36 and if we tone this down to 1 it would go minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. And if you notice, uh, the actual grid is changing. And why layout is important is because if you remember when you just insert Brawl for the first time, it, you have less characters. You unlock them as you go. And Brawl uses a code that basically takes the number of slots you have at any point in your game and makes the grid for you. And so when you have a complete roster, you have 36. And so by manipulating this, we can um, have different layouts, and we can actually go into um, above 36 layouts, and we get these blanks. And the maximum for this is 50. What each of these buttons does, because you're mostly going to be editing in this 36 button layout, is it, it's what you select for the character. So we have Mario. and you can see that he's over here. What if we wanted him over here? And we wanted Bowser over here. Random, we wanted it over here. And Game Watch over there. Well already this is kind of a, li a nice little change. I mean it's a little bit more edgy. And what all you'd have to do is file save and it would show up like this. A couple warnings here. First off, underneath these player slots, which you can move. If you wanted, you could put player 2 up here and then reorganize all the things under it somewhere else. But the important thing to remember is under player 1 and player 4, there is an extra 2. And those are the things that the computer uses or you use in the other modes, like challenge or subspace emissary or any of those other things, home run contest, etc. Second thing to watch out about, if we move a character like Captain Falcon under where typically the 
portrait boxes would go. So right now, where he is, or anywhere under, we can't select him without a certain code that lets you do that. So make sure if you're putting it under, you get that code. It's called like the custom CSS fix, or something like that. So if you're just toying around, make sure to keep all the characters on top. Obviously you don't want to put characters on top of this stuff, because that would just be inconvenient. And now we're going to talk about what these things are. <coughs> the only ones that really matter are translation, X and Y, because that's where your thing is. Random's over here, it's 26 minus on X, and plus 8 on Y, he's way over here, and now he is 25X minus 0. Minus 0.5 on Y. And what this program is actually doing is editing SC cell characters animation data for the animation layout 36. This is a, a animation for when you have 36 slots. This is what it will look like. And so what we're doing is we're editing these things animation for that. So frame 0, we're changing the frame so that it will be that way for the rest of the time. And that's how you can rotate the menu because it's actually a 3D thing. Uh, rotation works if you wanted to do that, however, it is glitchy. You might get a weird result. I wouldn't recommend rotation. Scale is pretty cool if you run into a situation where you have like 33 and you're like, oh man, I love Captain Falcon, I just want him to be one big button. So let's make him three times the size. Now he's way cooler. <laughs> An important thing to note, he will always be three times the size, even on layout 36. Maybe just two times the size for Falcon. <laughs> Up here we have face and item number. The face is actually what is displayed. So that doesn't matter at all. It's just aesthetics. So you could have zero for nothing, or the maximum value for random, doesn't matter. The item number is what's important. So position 33 means something. Position 2, that's Donkey Kong. If we wanted this button to be someone else, let's say we wanted this one to be Mario, bam. It's this one right here. Now, once you've toyed around with it, you've gone, oh, Meta Knight sucks, let's put him in the corner. OP. Then you go File, Save As, and remember to remove the underscore en and save it as like test tutorial or whatever. Save it somewhere you remember, and what it's compressing is that animation data. Check for time. Alright. You can go ahead and close this up now, once it saves correctly, of course. Sorry, once my computer gets past 11 o'clock, everything slows down. So we're just going to leave that like that. Just let it party over there. Uh, <laughs> once you have your SD card in your computer, all you have to do is navigate to it, if I will be able to, in my computer's state of helplessness. And you'll art you'll navigate all the way to PF menu 2. So not PF menu 2, PF and then menu 2. The only file that I have in there is that. So we just copy this over. You copy it over, you rename it so that it's just SC underscore cell character. Plug it in your Wii, and when you go to play, it will look like this. And it will be great. If you want to do custom stuff, like you want the alloys to be their own slot, you want the Zelda and Sheik icons to be separated, along with the Zero Suit Samus and the Pokemon Trainer's Pokemon, you'll have to use codes for that. This works really well with just this, because it's not manipulating codes, it's manipulating animations. Once you start adding codes, then they kind of conflict, and it's a little bit more difficult. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and have fun with it, because I know I do, and I wish you all a lot of happiness in Brawl modding. Check out my blog to vote on the next tutorial, and thanks a lot.